Fans of Neo Geo MVS hardware have been treated to some really cool enhancements over the years. From custom super guns to a universal BIOS to virtual memory cards and even a complete open source kit that allows you to consoleize an MV1C motherboard. That open source kit is my favorite way to play Neo Geo games and provides the best quality analog output I've ever seen from a Neo Geo. But what if you could get digital output from an MV1C? Let's take a look at a true digital to digital HDMI output kit for the Neo Geo. Okay, some disclaimers before we start. First, this video was originally uploaded to YouTube over two years ago in May 2021. I never published it because the chips used to make these HDMI boards went out of stock and weren't readily available until recently. And while a lot's changed in the retro gaming world from then till now, this is still a great device that I'd like to share with everybody. First, the focus of this video is the CPS Digi AV board, formerly known as the CPS HDMI. This board was designed by Marcus, the same person who created the open source scan converter. It was originally designed for Capcom arcade boards, but Marcus created a custom firmware that allows it to work with the Neo Geo. At the moment, it's only compatible with the MV1C motherboard, as that's the only Neo Geo that outputs both video and audio digitally. Potentially, Marcus could make adapters for other MVS versions, as well as maybe even the AES home console. The developer Fixel has opened pre-orders on his own HDMI mod that's compatible with many consoles, including the AES. I'll definitely do a video on that when I get it installed in my Neo Geo. Since Fixel's boards haven't arrived to customers yet, it's not at all fair for me to do any kind of comparison because we haven't seen it yet, so this video is only going to concentrate on the CPS2 Digi, but once I get Fixel's installed in one of my Neo Geos, I'll definitely swing back and do a full comparison. Also, I'll be showing the CPS Digi AV installed in the OpenMVS, as it's a project centered around the same MV1C motherboard. The OpenMVS isn't required for this kit, but it's a great solution that I want to highlight again. Please check out my video on that for all the info you'd need. Okay, let's jump in and check this thing out. Installation of the kit isn't too hard, but probably isn't for beginners. Marcus has instructions on his GitHub, but I'd like to point out a few things. First and most importantly, you'll need to flash the board with the Neo Geo version of the firmware. It's the same exact board as the CPS kits, which is why it's still called the CPS Digi AV, but the firmware needs to match the board. It's the same process as flashing any device with a USB blaster, so it's pretty easy, but the board needs to be powered, so you might want to wait until it's installed to flash it. For the physical installation, you could just mount the HDMI port to the side of whatever case you're using. This should work well if you're modifying an original MV1C shell or existing Supergun case, and this will work for existing OpenMVS users as well. If you haven't made or bought an OpenMVS yet, Abram makes a kit he's calling the OpenMVS HD. This mounts the HDMI board in a slightly different location using a custom flex cable and bracket. If you choose to wire it yourself, just make sure the wires connecting to the board are as short as possible, and make sure to use a shielded coax cable for the clock line. Exactly like with the CPS installations, wires that are too long will result in video signal dropouts, or it won't work at all. Avram also designed a new rear I.O. plate that accommodates the HDMI port, as well as the settings buttons, all while retaining the full functionality of the analog video output. It basically makes it look like a factory HDMI Neo Geo. So now that we've seen the basic installation overview, let's check out the features. After installation, or if you've bought an OpenMVS HD kit with one pre-installed, simply plug it in and start playing. As you can see, simultaneous dual output of the RGB and HDMI ports is supported, and it's the perfect setup for streamers, or just people who use both digital and analog displays. To access the features, press and hold the menu button for a few seconds, then release. These extra buttons and the features are the exact same options as with the CPS boards, but I wanted to show them here anyway. First are the resolution options. Here's 720p, and this is good if you have a native 720p panel. I think the other resolutions will be better for most setups though, so I would really stick with this just with 720p displays. Next is a 1280x1024 resolution, which is perfect if you have a 4x3 LCD monitor, 
or if that's a resolution that works well with your capture card for streaming setups. After that is a 1080p resolution with a 4x scale. I actually prefer this for streaming since I can add an overlay without cutting off any screen space, but I never actually play this way when gaming on an LCD. There's just too much wasted space on the top and bottom of the screen. Here's by far my favorite mode, 1080p 5x. I have a whole video dedicated to why this is often best for home consoles, and I think it's also the best choice for the Neo Geo. The menu option right below it toggles the offset, or vertical position, and you could line it up to have pretty much the same cutoff as a CRT. You might have something like the press start text cut off from the very top, but usually it's nothing that actually affects gameplay. Here's a good example. There's a tiny bit more cutoff on the flat panel, but this looks almost identical to the CRT. The next resolution is 1200p, first as a 1600x1200 4x3 resolution, then a 1920x1200 widescreen resolution. This resolution's good if you have a panel that's 1200p or higher, and don't want to cut off any information from the top or bottom. Even if you prefer 5x mode, if you have a 1200p native resolution panel, I'd use this mode as it's always better to run your display at its native resolution. Same with the next mode. If you have a native 1440p panel, definitely use this. If you have a 4K TV, it might be worth trying too, just to see if you like it better than 1080p 5x. If I found a game that cut off just too much to enjoy in 1080p 5x mode, this is the one that I would use. The black bars on the top and bottom aren't too big, you get a really sharp picture, and overall I think it's better than 1080p 4x, except for streaming like I mentioned before. The next output mode is 240p. Yep, that's right, the HDMI port will output 240p, then you could use a zero lag digital to analog converter to connect the output to either an RGB or component video input on a CRT. These converters are really cheap, and if you get an HD15 to SCART, you could safely send the 240p VGA output to any SCART device, essentially making this a clean RGB out mod as well. Now, if your goal was only RGB output, simply using a super gun is much easier than this, but there's one other really important use of the direct mode, future scalers. You can set this to output 240p, then connect the HDMI out to the HDMI input of something like the RetroTINK 4K. This will let you retain that perfectly clean audio and video signal, but scale it to 4K with some amazing CRT emulation masks. Check out my video on the RT4K for more info. The next mode is 480p, designed for use with VGA monitors through a cheap HDMI to VGA converter. 480p looks good on this multi-format PVM, but here's where scan lines really make a difference. Adding fake horizontal scan lines to a VGA CRT monitor makes it look almost identical to a 240p RGB monitor. This means you can find an old VGA CRT for cheap or even free, connect this, and have it look pretty much like a PVM. I have a whole video dedicated to RGB on VGA monitors, so please check that out if you're interested. There's a few other options to tweak the scan lines, and I suggest just giving it a try and seeing if any options look good to you. Some people can dial things in and feel like it's a perfect representation of a CRT, while others just prefer the sharp look of the image and use CRTs when they want scan lines. There's no right answer, just do whichever you prefer. People running this through a stereo should note that there's the same quad stereo option as with the CPS firmware. If you have a home theater, this can send the audio to all four speakers. Basically, just toggle the options and see what sounds best to you. Lastly, there's a setting to adjust the HDMI output. This setting could be set to full or limited color space, as well as a DVI mode if needed. Check your display requirements to see what's the best match for you. Then, once you've got everything configured, save your settings, and every time you power on the console, it'll default to whatever you left off with. If you only want to toggle scan lines, holding the second select button will turn those on and off, skipping the menu. It's all pretty straightforward and should have every option you need. So overall, I love this new HDMI kit and I think it looks and sounds absolutely awesome in a Neo Geo, but I wanna let everybody know that you don't need this kit to have a good Neo Geo experience. Using a quality super gun with a scaler will get you a great output 
And there's some awesome MVS consoleized solutions for people who want the low cost of MVS carts, but with the feel of an AES home console. Heck, if original hardware doesn't matter, there's even an excellent Neo Geo core on the Mister, and of course, software emulation options can range from free to really awesome custom solutions that feel like an arcade machine. This product is for us crazy folk who insist on squeezing every bit of performance out of original hardware. And for us, it's totally worth it. Well, that's it for this time. I left that last me on camera shot from the original video in here just as a shout out to everybody who's been watching this channel for a long time and because I really missed that apartment and the background and the shirt I was wearing was pretty cool too. So I wanted to show at least some of the me footage from the original video. Anyway, if you want to support this channel at absolutely no extra cost to you, you could simply use affiliate links to get the same stuff you were going to get from places like Amazon and eBay at the exact same price, but we get a small cut. Also, if you really like this channel, please consider signing up for any of the monthly support services as that's what's keeping all of this stuff going, especially all the behind the scenes research. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.